Uh, does everyone speak German? Or what language do you prefer? German or English? English? Yeah? Okay, I'm fine with both. I don't really care. So, using the Wiimote, everyone is giving talk. Please come to the Wiimote. Uh, how you call it, get one to present. Very cool. So, uh, who am I? So, why should you trust me? And I don't know who am I. Uh, often, I think that's my real name. No one actually told me about that, not even my parents. I got parents from Giddy, and so do my friends. You write your program and then you say, ah, oh, wait, this has to communicate with the outside world. How am I going to do this? And there are lots of technologies like Corva, SOAP, and all these XML standards and whatnot. So people, the idea that people have is we're going to write our program, we're going to all keep it closed up in our company, and then we're going to write some sort of interface that can communicate with our business partners or whatever. So it's not actually built into the program. The program isn't really scalable because you've still got your little program and it might special storage options that are scalable, it might have something really fun that's scalable. But actually the whole program doesn't 
detail, there's always this little algorithm that was my own experience that was a sorting algorithm. And that sorting algorithm, that was the bottleneck. And we had everything in the cloud, everything lived on Amazon, I don't know where. But no, this little sorting algorithm running on a little Pentium server with two cores or whatever, that was holding everything up. And so I said, this is not good. We write these algorithms and then we distribute them. It's, that's not how it should work. I mean, a lot of work has been especially like you said 20 years ago, in middleware solution to the OS to act as one thing. That doesn't work for us either. I mean, there's no real success, in that, I would say. So, current day of there's all the big players, a very good thing Amazon, what was expected. But of course, now everyone wants to do the cloud. I mean, Google is everything, it's the cloud. And so, all let's imagine you write a a little front end or some little program. And you decide to go with Google. So you go with Google, you need the Google storage, you need the Google profile, you know, Java, what you could use, you stay with that provider. There's no way for you to written your application in Google Toolkit or whatever. Come up with like this, I'm gonna to go to Amazon. And you take the application and move it to Amazon. So you have to change your libraries or take a lot of hacking back to create this whole program. And then you say, oh, Amazon is too slow or security but no, I don't care. And then you might just that's stupid and then because then you have to reprogram everything in the .NET. And that's stupid. In a company, you can't rely on Amazon for the next 20 years. I, I've seen Fortran programs that are 50 years old. Now, can you rely on Amazon being around for that long? I don't know. Can you like, Microsoft, maybe Google, I suppose so, and what will happen, you know? But really, you write a program now, and you select something. You're just selecting the current state. You can't write fault by a venture capitalist. And all the data is sold off somewhere. But you don't know what's going to happen. You, if you go to the cloud, you're selling off your assets. So um, basically, it's a standard build up and where cloud computing kicks in. You've got all these locations. You've got all these locations here. Uh, I can't get back into cloud mode. <laughs> you've got all these locations. You've got all these users. You've got all these devices, and everyone has an iPhone, Blackberry, I don't care, I don't know what the devices are. And all these users, they want to use different applications that are different devices from different locations. And it's a horrible mess. Basically, if someone's written an application that should run on an iPhone, on a Blackberry, on a website, and be available to you know, disabled people, then basically you need 200 people to just write their head over because it's possible. And then you've got firewalls, you've got corporate firewalls. You've got at home, you've got Flow selling, and then you've got your mum has no idea about computers, but she still wants to read the email that some magazine sends her. And she's got a limited laptop, but your dad's got a, it's all it's basically bollocks. So, back to the cloud landscape. And the cloud was trying to solve this. But then, this is like a long one before. Oh, yeah. This is what I talked before that you have the different cloud services that if you look at. The right app, the main app, the calendar, and the data storage. That should all be accessible for all this. And you get some points like this. So uh, now you've got all the storage. So let's say you moved into the cloud. Pretty much everyone, even if you didn't like it, was Gmail. But all, pretty much everyone who uses Gmail, web, or some other email service that you don't host yourself. Exactly. Who knows which other data is on? Where? Who <laughs> reads those emails? <laughs> yep. Uh, everyone at Google can read your emails. <laughs> yeah, well, that. Um, so basically, all these people, um, all these services, even though it's all shut down, what I described, and they communicate over this XML site. <laughs> what people love or hate. Um, so basically, what's the solution? I'm talking about this is all shut and uh, everything, but how can you sort of solve this problem of everyone living in their little universe and everyone doing different things? And but the solution to me, you're more than welcome to criticize this thing, distribute objects. I did a lot of scope and all this, and it was horrible. Literally, have you ever used it in a production environment? You just don't want to do it. So, um, I was like, why? Why, why have got all these object oriented languages? Everyone learns Java or whatever, and it's Python, everything's an object. How does this object have to live on my machine? Why do I need a state int? How does this int need to be on my machine? Why do I care where it is? I mean, if 
I already upload my email to the cloud, why do I actually care where my stuff is? I mean, my email is my bank, it's the most trustworthy stuff that I have. Why do I, why do I care where my what is? So, um, I said, why can't I just need to live on Instagram.org? And I don't know, there's something new for that every week with an advertisement, and that's how they defend themselves or someone has a response, so I don't care. I don't want to know, I don't care. I've created a language that sort of incorporates these ideas. And of course, the whole thing is to have one big cloud, where all these services have to talk to each other. And here's a little update of my language it's a Java C Python mix. So, those are the language I like. And I, I sort of don't like Java, but um, <laughs> I was supposed to. Uh, I like it. So, this is the language that I support most people to make. Hey, like, yeah. I mean, most people know C, Java, or Python, or some Ruby, or something. But well, let's mix all the best things about these languages to come up with a language that's easy to read for what Java definitely is. It's so sort of simple to draft. And so, I created an object. An object is very simple. If you look at a file object, you see your level file is a new file object that is called the path in the parameter to create a event, so that's file in the name, at openbox.org. And this will create the virtual machine, this will inspect the virtual machine on openbox.org. And that event uh, file will live on openbox.org, can be referenced in your program. Where am I here? Uh, this basically is a pointer to somewhere in the internet. Uh, I've got no idea where the file object lives. I don't care, because Openbox is my provider. So I've got no idea this could be in Canada on some server. It could be moved if I access it to America, and it could be moved to China. It could be mirrored like a thousand other from dependent locations. I don't care. As long as I have a point to it, why do I care? Why do I have to care about points? I just rely on Openbox being a reliable good service. The same as CalServer.net. I create a new calendar. I have CalServer. And uh, then what I can do, if I want to create a new event, I create a new event on the calendar, call a method. I just don't want to know what method is. If you have to, you have to, if it gets too technical, you have to stop. I call a method on this um, object. Just actually go off to the server and say, hello, look, this is my parameter, and add or create the event on the cloud server. So all your processes are done in the cloud. And this is very good if you imagine you have a handheld device, like a PDA or something, you won't have gigahertz and gigahertz and mem terabytes of memory in this device. You have like an iPhone, I don't know what iPhone has, 36 megahertz or something. Yeah? You won't have, won't have the processing power on your device. But for this, all the processing power is off to the cloud, off to the computing tree. At the end, you shouldn't care where it's processed, what's processed, it's done, and you get the result. And this is what it does. Basically, if you say, well, add line, but you have the here, you have the cal server having your event, you have your file server having your file where you want to save the event. So now if I say event.value, this uh, the file server will go off to the event object and say give me more value. Basically, those two servers will talk to each other because you without noticing only thing will notice is okay this is the stuff. And through this those two have a far quicker connection than you to the internet. It's well known that Google has an all Fiber backbone they can talk so quick with each other. The last pop of mile, then off to your PC, that's so big. Your wireless connection, that's what's slowing it down. So, here's a code big. And so, basically, you can offload a big sort of a big sorting task if you have an ASP list on a file server of a thousand records and you want to sort it. I'm sure sortserver.org, if that's the only thing they do, they can have a very, very efficient algorithm to sort this stuff. They can have the quickest memory, they can have the best technique, they have the hardware to do this. You, with your little PA, you won't be able to sort that list in 10 years. But because you say, you sort, server, sort that list, and put it to the backbone, it can just go off, get the data in a second, sort it, push it back, or take you ages first to download the list, or to run it, take it up from the hard disk, and memory, sort of memory, then memory's not big enough. They are specialized in this. They can have specialized machines talking to each other. Yes. Yes, yes, please. please. Yes, 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 please. Yes,
So let's say if so this net object is, is a, an IP or a host and hash, and then this object has to see some SSL stuff attached to it and some security and stuff. So if you go, this is, let's say you have a file server link here, and you have the event object here. And you invoke the app method here, and you say, hello, Mr. I want, I want to um, the event object to be added to you. And then the server here will go off and resolve the event pointer to the object and say, hello, I've got a request from this host. And in the next version, I have pushed it to the SNS. It will actually start negotiating SSL certificates. So as soon as you type this line, the virtual machine will realize, ah, look, there's nothing to this here. It pushes certificates to both machines and they know that they can walk to each other. Now they can just walk within a hash. So, and then they can walk, and that's, that's the whole idea of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But basically, the idea is you only, you, uh, if you look at the end again, uh, NPC, for view control, um, your, your data is going to be, it's, it's going to care about it, it's hosted in the cloud. You're processing the data. Is the best in the cloud because they are specialized. They, they have the power. They have the storage. They have the backups. Not now that it's seven locations, it is not backed up. They have seven copies of the data. Who has the read at home? Who backs up the home directory every two hours? Yeah, but you know what? They, they are less likely to lose your data than you are ever. What happens if the robot comes into your house, robs all your PCs and all your CDs? Who has the space somewhere or who sets his data away or the backups? So, Okay, 
So I have my code called cool. <laughs> like everything else. And I call it object, object protocol. And this is HTTP extended because I thought, why do I need this massive overhead in scope? Parsing scope is really, really, really slow. If you look at the execution part, this is just a really simple test. Object is, I think, five times faster than something in parsing. If you've got everything moving, different sort of that have to communicate with each other, time is better at some stage. You can't just push it away like Amazon. Uh, 
have a PDF file kind of in the middle of public places, but public everything doesn't work anymore. As soon as you make it public, everything or internet is public. Uh, security is a very big problem that I'm implementing now for a little bit before yesterday, is that you can encrypt objects with the key you have locally. So you have a key object living on a local device, and every object you have externally has this key. If, so basically everything you do, you pass the key with it. So through that, even if you don't, if you don't trust, you, you don't see your host data as Amazon, you don't trust Amazon with the data. Because it lives in America, the American system is going to stay a little bit. And, um, <laughs> you, um, you trust, I don't know, um, read access what the EU is called there in Germany. And you give them the security object reference and give them the key, the data reference, and they can pull the data, decrypt it, and use it and provide the object you've saved. But the data is still like Amazon encrypted and that all the advantages are backed up. Whatever. The security is very vital and that's a place that lots of people don't see about computers. I've companies move their company email to Gmail. And I'm like, guys, just giving Google all your <laughs> internal data, you just be selling out. And, oh, it's so easy, it works, maybe look at some Google Docs. And I'll do all this stuff in Google Docs and not really realizing what that is going out there. I talked about cloud collection and there are so many problems you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> what I've come up with. So I've got 30 pictures I think of the listing of problems. Uh, the future. Well, I think the cloud will resolve something. At some point, the cloud providers will have to talk to each other. It's, not, it's already happening that like you have all these APIs. And everyone has this thing in the guy. Amazon has something different to Facebook, and Facebook has something different to Twitter. And everyone has a different AI and you have to change. That's so I think if you really want the full potential of cloud, they have to find some agreement. If that's so, if that's some standard, they need a standard, and they're starting already to talk with this cloud consortium and already advertising stuff. But there needs to be a standard. Uh, more people will be in the cloud. I know if you live, people hate it, but I mean that's it. That's life. Uh, it will happen. If a CEO hears this off with everything, and it will be all be in the night. And people will not have a massive PC on their feet anymore. I remember like, my mum had a big PC, and now a little pink pad or a little EPC. And people will not have this massive calculation power. It's going to have to be having a central point where you have the internet as a cloud, as your data and your processing power. You will have everything on the web properly, but the normal user will not. I know people that have been their PC for their iPhone, and they use the iPhone for everything. And I was like, how can you, you've got a dual core, four gigabyte memory, super high machine, just paid a grand for it. Oh, my iPhone can do it. Uh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> uh, four objects, the, the only real interesting thing. Top of the level, because now, um, if you, if, uh, if you this internet, basically, I want to add commas here so you can specify many servers, and you can say, okay, Use this server and they also come up with each other. That's the way they started implementing in this and stuff. But basically, the idea is you don't want to trust one server as all your data or as all your cal objects. You want a backup server back here that if the cal server gets hacked, you can have your data back. It can be a slow server, this can be a box on your S. This can be your server on my home, but you want a backup somewhere. So that's um, a big thing. More caching, because this is a problem, this is a very big problem. Um, just writing a paper, a model invitation, because it, this is it's going that servers are talking to each other, and UL has no big view of big servers, services talking to each other. The US government says 80% of all their software products have to be off the shelf. But how is the model? I mean, yes, I've the off the shelf program, but how do you model the API? How do you model talking to each other? How do you model privacy? Enough of just research on that. Private clouds are going to come. I mean, HP, I know from HP they've got private clouds and they mix them and quite cool actually. Uh, I want to add for object is payment. Let's say you've written some really, really cool encryption on hashing algorithm. And I want every encryption of you do, you get half of the central funds from your buy. That's it. And that would be really cool because then you get money through PayPal in a way and you can just write something, publish it, and get paid for it. And so I think payment and people would prefer, I suppose, would prefer to pay for that. 
authentication, more security. I mean, I can only stress that the security, 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 but people don't care about it. Um, I want different output filters in Python, Java, Script. I, I want an output on every device pretty much you can get. And more security, of course, everything should be encrypted. Um, uh, it's, it's me <laughs> doing this, and I can do it. This is what this is. So I like this whole idea. Talk to me. Contribute. Uh, I've got a few people sending me patches, but all only people who are doing it in spare time. It doesn't really work. Uh, I don't really have time to do this at the moment. I don't have money. So this is a website, object.rebound. Um, my email address again. So uh, now we've got another few minutes. Questions? Yes. Um, you, it's not possible yet in the stable version that you throw, uh, oh, it's finished. That you throw an error object at that send end. But can you have a problem? <laughs> then it, it will just block. <laughs> of course, I mean, if, the net, if the network is down, that's it. I was just traveling in the ICE or this German speed train. So uh, I'm assuming that the internet will become very regular stable. But caching comes into that and uh uh in a way yes. Someone said you can do it for I'm told. But yeah? but the scheme is different. You have to be careful with the scheme. <laughs> yes, is that the Java? No, I can use it in the. Ah, okay, yeah. Okay. Ah, okay. But basically, I've, I've heard from quite a few companies and countries, uh, universities in London. I wanted to learn about compilers, that was one of the main ideas of, <laughs> of watching this. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, yeah, that's, I think that's a whole idea that you have more power involved, that you don't care what your data is anymore. Uh, yes. And I, uh, I, I would call it soul. <laughs>
I mean, I think the sounds are on there, and I don't know how this is going to I think you've got the link online. I don't even know if that works, to be so sure. <laughs> I haven't tested it, but it went down two days ago. Indian server, by the way. Basically, I've written a few applications and I've all had them look. It's very easy to develop. Let's say you've got your top standard developer. It's very simple to develop. You get all, all the objects that you on your machine. So it's quick, it's fast, and you have everything on your machine. And then you say, okay, now I just want to put this into the cloud. And then the only thing you do is you change the object location. This can be done by the end, this can be done by class or by object. You can see that. That will have that sort of. But you can say, all the end objects can be at the end. It's not specified otherwise. On that server. So if you develop it, it's very simple to develop on your machine and then say all the interesting stuff and someone can pay for it or you put someone in the cloud, and you keep all the past objects over to something. Okay. So basically, the clip. Yeah, so basically, if you look at this, there are four ways of doing this. So let's look at the four code. So this is the first thing. So you say at open box. And this is if you really know where it should go. What in a normal scenario you would never use because you normally never know where your object should live. Then you can say in the cloud config file, you can say all um, objects, all file objects in this class should live on that server. And then you can say for the virtual machine, you can say all objects in the virtual machine should live there. And that's just text off. It's just like uh, in at in the server. And it's just separated by the So it's very simple if you have all the in objects in the whole virtual machine. Let's say you're, you're, a, so you're a service provider for file objects. Okay, you run open box org. And you say, okay, uh, my server's having such a massive load. So you say, okay, the first object internally, the class might have an int an implement in it, and you say these ints are taking up so much space, I don't have to carry it. You just change it for all the virtual machines, so all these ints should go onto int server. The org. You call the int server org and say, guys, please help me out. Let's run automatically every it's read, or it's cached at every 50 seconds it's read. And then you say, okay, now all the int objects will be there. But of course, your local object still stays valid. So it's very important to stay stable. You can just say, oh, look, my sister is reading a bit now. I, so I'm going to change the object locations to be somewhere else. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. Um, wave is different, isn't it? I think I, I, wave is more API, it's more API, isn't it? It's more, it's actually my idea was to have the language to, because you've got the OS is scalable, you've got output filter level, I want a language that incorporates scalability. And um, Wave isn't really a language, so you've got Python rules, I think. And, but then, but then and you can run these services too, aren't you? Open source level or something. Uh, I have to look into that, I don't know. I've just seen the pro video and it always seems to be boring. Thank you.
and the microphone.